What's going on, Internet? I'm Christopher Peterson, and you're listening to the Nerd EXP Gamecast. This week, I'm hanging out with my boy, Brooks. Hey. And you, out there listening. If this is your first time, you're in for a treat. If you're coming back, thanks. We appreciate it. Each week, members of the blogging community go through this week's top gaming headlines and help you level up your gaming IQ. Uh, starting off from this Monday, uh, a big hubbaloo, uh, Koji Igarashi. You might not know the name, but you definitely know his work. Uh, this guy is behind Castlevania Symphony of the Night and a slew of other Castlevania games that, that you've enjoyed. Uh, he came out um, leaving Konami and did a Kickstarter for Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. The original ask was 500000 and they are sitting at $1.9 million with 29 days to go. What are your thoughts on uh, this game in particular, Brooks? Well, I've always been a big fan of Castlevania, the Castlevania series on uh, on NES, SNES, uh, PlayStation, PlayStation 2. Last few weren't that great, but I'm kind of excited about this this, this news. It's been, a, it's been a need for a Castlevania game for a very long time. And it's finally nice to see that they're going to try to revisit the series, even if it isn't only a uh, spiritual successor. Yeah, I mean, this looks just like Mighty Number no. 9 uh, to Mega Man. Um, this is a um, Castlevania game in everything but name. Uh, main character, um, you know, gothic set- setting, uh, uses a whip or a sword. Um, you know, game is coming out on Xbox One, PS4, and Steam. Um, it's a $28 digital copy through Kickstarter, which I think feel like that's a little bit higher than normal, but, um, you know, some games have been playing around with uh, um, experimental price points, like 30 40 so maybe you are still getting a deal. Um, and, you know, Iga, Iga is uh, a, a crazy personality. Um, he definitely draws attention. Um, one thing that I think is interesting about this Kickstarter in general is there are ways to unlock things um, if enough people create fan art or like the Twitter page and Facebook page or write fan fiction um, with that aren't necessarily monetary, um, like not necessarily just hitting dollar awards. So they're playing around with just kind of some different feedbacks and getting the word out. Uh, I three, go on. Well, there's three things about this game that I think I'm gonna like. One is that um, it's, it's two play. It's a two player. There's two players on it. You can get two players on it. Um, the second thing is that it has a nightmare difficulty. That means if I go through it and I really, and I find it too easy, I can really ramp the difficulty. And the third thing is for all you maniacs out there, it has a speed run feature. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know if you've been paying attention. Um, I, I follow Axiom Verge on Twitter. Uh, and he posts, and, like, that game is getting a huge speed run mentality and feedback. I think that built-in clock makes a world of difference for people's uh, play styles and, and willing to go through. And it, you know, kind of turns speed running um, a little bit more casual, but also gives the hardcore, like, an, an honest benchmark instead of kind of having to come up with their own rules and regulations on it. I think, I personally think that's a feature that we'll see. Um, included in more games that are of this uh, vein, uh, of this Castlevania. <laughs> um, sorry about that. Yeah, give, give give people more options to play the game. I mean, you get more life out of. <clears throat> so, uh, I mean, this is great news uh, for for this game and fans of this genre. Um, you know, and one thing uh, I personally was kind of anti Kickstarter at one point um, and thought it was really predatorial. To fans, um, and I still think that when the games don't actually get made or the product doesn't get made, I think that Kickstarter should have some sort of liability. They're obviously taking the cut of it, but I mean, you know, we're looking at almost two million dollars, but only twenty-five thousand backers. If a studio paid for this game and it sold twenty-five thousand copies, it would be a horrible, horrible disappointment. Yeah, somebody had to put up some serious chatter. Big time. So, I mean, for the fact that, you know, Kickstarter is just like this interesting where you get, you get your super fans, you get your whales out there, and yet, you know, you make 
two million dollars and it's a huge success but you do that off of you know twenty six thousand people um so it's just kind of a, an interesting inverse model it could be worse though i i, I kind of like kickstarter in the sense that with all these great big studios now where they, where they're spending budget of 150 million just to make a game it's kind of nice to have a way for people with good ideas to get a little bit of financing so they can put more, more games out give people more options to play i agree with you um i i agree with you at this point that i think that uh the the kickstarter model is good um for these smaller venues for these types of games um that it is a good way to gauge interest uh that it is important and um especially i don't know and i know i'm not supposed to look at it this way but it's it's basically a pre-order service at this point yeah, Which, it needs a few. It needs a few checks and balances, but for the most part, it's a great idea, I believe. Uh, yeah. Um, any other thoughts on Bloodstained Ritual of the Night? Uh, my only concern is when would I get a first, uh, my first chance to try it out? Oh my gosh. Um, I mean, you know, they're just not getting the funding. Um, they have some great looking graphics on their Kickstarter page. But uh, it, it clearly says this is all, even the stuff that looks like in-game footage, this is all mm-hmm. prototype and mock-ups. And, uh, so I don't think you're anywhere near getting this game made. Um, so I, I think 2017. And I could be wrong about that. They, you know, maybe they can pump this out sooner. But it, it, looks, it looks like it's still um, in the planning phases as far as that's concerned. I'm willing to wait if the game is great. De- uh, yeah, I mean, you know, um, I'm I'm willing to wait. I'm always willing to wait. Uh, but, you know, I've kind of said on the before, and I stand by this, uh, I just want realistic t- I want realistic deliverables and time frames. Fair you enough. Uh, and right now, sorry, I'm looking at it right now. They are saying March 2017. So that's their time frame. Um, so that's, that sounds reasonable. I mean, you're looking at basically two years. Uh, not necessarily spending as much time on it, but um, I think we called it out. And just because of the success of this, we'll also mention uh, Ukulele. This is another uh, game that uh, Banjo Kazooie um, inspired. That uh, I know about. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're sitting at 2.4 million dollars. 32 days to go. 50,000 backers. Um, 3D platformer. Uh, basically Banjo Kazooie ripoff. Um. But in, I mean that in the best possible sense. Uh, you have a character that flies, that sits on top of the head of another larger anamorphic character. Um, I'm between this and Mighty Number no. Nine, and you know others. I'm oh, I'm so surprised that they don't get sued by their parent company. Well, they're not actually using the characters. I mean, you can use a similar gameplay style because if they're saying, well, they ripped us off, that won't hold up in court if you got something that's kind of similar. If you're using the same characters and things like that, yeah, I could see. But similar mechanics, nah. No, Too I many mean, games are like for you to get away with trying to sue somebody for it now. Yeah, you're right. I mean, this isn't like, um, it's funny because like, you know, in um, technology like phones and stuff, people get away with frivolous lawsuits that are like, Oh, I came up with the idea of touch controls. Oh, yeah, they got expensive lawyers, that's all. <laughs> um, so ukulele, another, I uh, just want to give that a quick shout-out. Um, and you, you sounded really excited about this. Are you... Oh, are oh you yeah, a- I was a big man Joe Kazooie fan, and this is, uh, this is pretty much a game in the same vein. Are you interested in uh, kickstarting? Like, have you ever paid up front? Uh, honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. Not really. It's not because I don't want to, but I, I can always find too many other things to spend money on, unfortunately. No, I mean, that's true. I mean, you're basically making... Usually on things I don't enjoy very much. That's the problem. Yeah, and like we said, I mean, you're basically tying up your money th- two years in advance. Um, to, be so honest, I... to be honest about something, I'm surprised this project didn't get even more backers than what it has and more money than what it has. Because there's a whole lot of people that have been waiting for Rare to drop another Banjo Kazooie game, but considering how the studio has been bouncing between play, um, publisher to publisher to publisher, console to console, you know nothing's been happening. So now there's finally some kind of activity, even if it isn't quite you know the people we were expecting. Yeah, I mean uh, you bring up a great point about Banjo Kazooie um, and the people. It's funny because Rare 
as it exists today. I, you know, I'm not looking at their uh, head count, but I can't imagine it's the rare that made Banjo Kazooie. No, no, not yeah. hardly. Platonic Games is the rare that made Banjo Kazooie. So how crazy would it be if Microsoft gets on stage at E3 and goes, "Oh, one more thing, we're doing a Banjo Kazooie." Oh yeah, man, that'd be a cool, <laughs> that'd be a, a, a cool to end all cools. <laughs> They'll pick up quite a few more people picking up consoles. And they don't even. I mean, they can just toss a logo up. Oh yeah, and this is an exclusive. Oh yeah. Um, all right. Uh, we've got announced this week. Um, like clockwork. Assassin's Creed's coming out this uh, fall. Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Oh. What's um before we jump into the Assassin's Creed Syndicate? What's your relationship with the Assassin's Creed franchise? To be honest, I like it. But I haven't been all that enthusiastic for the last few games. So I played, um, I played them all except for Unity um, and Rogue. Uh, so I played um, Assassin's Creed. It was okay. Assassin's Creed 2, great. Brotherhood, even better. Brotherhood's my favorite. Um, Revelations, maybe a little thin. Assassin's Creed 3 came out, terrible. So uh-huh. bad. So, oh, so you killing me terribly bad Assassin's Creed 3 was that I swore I would never play an Assassin's Creed game again. But then Assassin's Creed... Go on. I'm sorry. No, 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 go on. Considering the type of gameplay you have, I was hoping they would take the series somewhere else finally. I mean, do more with it. Like, put it somewhere else. Let's, Let's take it out of Europe. Let's put it in Ancient Japan or something. Let's have some ninjas or some samurai. <laughs> some just some, something interesting with it. I mean, this is their comfort food. I mean, you know, they they're gonna go with what they know, what they what sells. Um, I mean that those teams are mostly stationed in Europe. The development yeah. teams behind it. So. Um, but I mean, to your point, like do something different. Assassin's Creed Four came out, or Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Everybody would not shut up about how good this game was. I waited a few months. I played it. I did enjoy it. Like it, it, it was a, it was enough of a different take, and it had good mechanics that I was back into the franchise. I won't lie, I, I didn't hate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, like with all the problems around Unity, I just, um, I just couldn't do it. Um, and I was, I was genuinely excited for Unity when they first rolled out that uh, four-player assassins. Uh, four players at the same time, but then when they told said that you know if one of you fails, the whole mission fails, and it's only select missions, and so I was just like ah whatever, never mind. Um, so so then Assassin's Creed Syndicate comes out, trailers come out, gameplay footage comes out. Uh, like you said, it's set in um, London. It's a steampunk London. Um, there uh, you're gonna run into historical figures like Charles Dickens and uh, Charles Darwin. Uh, you play as two different brothers, and uh, the the gap during the Industrial Revolution is going to be um, kind of hyper-satired. So, like, the poor are extremely poor, and the rich are extremely rich. Um, I don't... I don't know. Like, I guess, like, it's an Assassin's Creed game, um, and I guess I'll probably do like i did with black flag and unity at this point i'll wait till the consensus comes in and what the mind speak is which i hate doing because i always want to make up my own opinions but i'll wait to what the man on the street says and i'll probably play this in march or not sounds like a reasonable strategy um did you see the trailer or anything that came out of this nope okay um one of the, uh, like I said, there's two brothers that you can play as. Um, they're street thugs, it looks like, making their way through. Um, one of the concepts is you have a rope gun to climb to the top of the building automatically as opposed to having to parkour and try and find a footing, but then don't and accidentally jump to another building behind you and all those shenanigans. Um, so I think that looks good. There's carriages, so we're getting closer to uh, modern day. Um, which I don't feel like they're, I don't know, I wasn't alive in the 1860s, but I can't imagine there were carriages constantly on the street, but, uh, that, that's how they're making the, uh, atmosphere look. 
Um, I mean, some people are saying, uh, you know, jokingly saying like, oh, this is uh, the Order Assassin's Creed 1866. Uh, I think it looks better than the Order from a gameplay perspective, hands down. Uh, so I'm going to just wait and see. Um, and then they haven't announced anything, but they might have gone away from the, uh, Xbox 360 PS3 model, or maybe they just didn't want to take uh, attention away from Syndicate right now. So I'd be curious to see how Rogue did, if it justifies another spinoff. There is it. There is it. There's a small feline creature around here somewhere. <laughs> Oh, well. That must be on your end. I thought I heard a cat. No, it's on my end, and it's funny that it picked up, because it is outside the room. Um, <laughs> like, I tried to kick everybody out, but uh, I guess maybe we should just let her in, and we'll see how oh, that no, goes. Oh, no, cat's cool, man, so <laughs> that, that's, you know. Um, just while we're on the Ubisoft front, um, and I apologize if you're if you're going to fall into this category out there, or if you Brooks. Um, Rainbow Six Siege got delayed, and so did Division. These are both scheduled for this year. And it furiated me how many people patted themselves on the back for being these great analysts and journalists for calling it, for calling that these games were going to get delayed. I mean, I hate, I don't mean to be rude about it, but no shit. There was no way these games were coming out. The writing was on the wall forever. Like, we've never seen actual footage. These were not 2015 games. Uh, so, I don't know. And, like, I've, I've been trying not, like, I know sometimes we make some crazy predictions, but I'm just... Like, I'm tired of, like, the analysts constantly, like, pointing out every time they get one right. I feel like if you're going to start doing that, you need to point out every time you get one wrong, too. Yep. Um, all me... things considered, I'm sorry. No, no, no. All go... things considered, when you think about all the other games that have been being, all the major games that have been coming out, it's not surprising these haven't been really worked on. And then all the ones that, the other games that have been released that have bugs... Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's a great point. Ubisoft got hit hard with, like we just said, Unity and Unity's bugs, and they don't want to make those mistakes again. Mm-hmm. Um, so Rainbow Six Siege got delayed till third quarter next year. Division got delayed all the way till fourth quarter next year, which typically, I feel like fourth quarter games a year and a half quickly turn into spring summer games the following yeah. year so um, I mean, I, 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 do, are, are people really seriously waiting for these games that much or are they just saying that uh i mean i just feel like this is another victim of being announced too early yeah more than likely um and this is i mean this is kind of what i alluded to at the top when i said realistic deliverables um i, I definitely want the best game possible but, I don't know, if you're going to announce a game two years out, and then have to delay it another year and a half... You there's have something to work with. Yeah, I mean, something's wrong with your model. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I don't mean to belittle game development. I completely think that game development is hard and complicated and more time-consuming than I think it is. And, it's, and I'm sure, like, changing the color on a character takes days, and you don't know what it accidentally crashes... But I think somebody in marketing is pushing out these delivery dates well above what the team and the programmers and the project leads actually want. Uh, more than likely. Um, I know you don't have a next-gen system. Did either of these games interest you on any level? Honestly, nope. Okay. <laughs> nope. I wasn't. A, I, I don't. I like Rainbow Six games. But they're not something that, that I prioritize. It's just something that I'll get once I have other things I like. I say, well, let me just, it's pretty cheap. Let me pick this up and add it to my collection. Otherwise, it's not something that I'm really ravenously wanting to play right now. Now that makes sense. I agree with you. Um, Division I was looking forward to. Uh, it looked... It kind of had like a Last of Us feel for um, the Fireflies versus uh, Hunters. Um, like that uh, multiplayer mode where you're just um, out there surviving and trying to be, you know, kind of scrounging through, making your own stuff, um, you know, urban warfare. Um, so that looked interesting. Um, but, I mean, it always looked like a concept more than a game from what we've seen previously. Uh, 
another game that got delayed uh, was Ratchet and Clank HD Remastered. Uh, I guess this is coming out to time with the Ratchet and Clank movie. From my understanding of, of what I read, this is basically Ratchet and Clank original, just coming out for PS4 and being redone and being in a better graphic style. So, I mean, this would be the... And that game already got an HD treatment, so... I don't know. I can't imagine anybody's really clamoring or upset about this loss. Uh, I'm, I, I've been wondering. It's been taking quite a long time. I'm a big fan of Ratchet and Clank games. I love that gameplay. It's just so much fun. But uh, I've been hearing it, it, sketchy information on this game. A little bit here, a little bit there. I can't. I almost forgot that it was actually a Ratchet and Clank game in development. You know, there's been so little information about it. No, I, yeah, I agree with you. Um, I love Ratchet and Clank games. I um, I think they're all great. Uh, I know some people like are really hard on them uh, for losing their roots, but the first one I actually played was uh, Ratchet and Clank All for One uh, because it was a free PS Plus game, and I was like, man, this is really fun. And then I went backwards from there. So, <coughs> I, I you know I think that they have good characters. I think that they have good moments. Um, to me, that like Ratchet and Clank is almost um, and this is not an original thought. Um, is almost what like Pixar would do if they made video games. Yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> um, so I'm quoting somebody. I don't know who. If you're the first person who ever said that, uh, let me know and I'll give you credit. Um, but yeah, I mean they're just fun. They're colorful. Uh, they're playful. Um, they have good uh, anamorphic characters, and you know they sometimes dip into serious moments. Yeah, and the optional weapons, the ammo and the weapons, it makes the game different every time. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely in, ingenious weapons and design. Uh, you know, uh, I feel like uh, Mr. Zorkon, everything he says, I, I laugh at the first time I hear it. Um, and sometimes even afterwards. Uh, so that'll be a game. That, those, are, those are some games that we have to wait to play. Uh, but a game we don't have to wait to play, or games, uh, Nintendo World Championship is coming back after 25 years. I wonder what brought this on. Cause they've been, they've been woefully deficient when it comes to, like, these sort of what, Nintendo gaming events. Yeah, I mean, you know, they had, um, some, uh, world-class Smash players come out last year, um, and, and kind of troubleshoot the game and go through it. Um. Uh, what's the? I that's a great question. Um, I would imagine one of two things: nostalgia, then in which Nintendo owns bucket loads of. And two, um, this is a distraction. Mm, probably. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you think about it. Uh, Nintendo doesn't have that many Wii U games coming out. They don't want to speak to their mobile. They don't want to speak to NX. So, I mean, this is a good way to get get fans excited and build goodwill and be different than the other 50 conferences that are going to happen um, so they can say something and have a presence without actually having to say something or have a presence. I just thought about something. Aside from um, Smash Brothers and Mario Kart, there haven't been a whole lot of... Uh a whole lot of competitive games that you could actually make an event out of on Nintendo consoles. I mean, from first party. Not that I can think of. Not for a while, anyway. Uh, I mean, maybe Splatoon. I mean, it hasn't come out yet, but Splatoon? I'm sure they're hoping. Perhaps. I mean, just think about it. I, you know, I hadn't considered that until that when this news, when I first heard about this news, I think, like, man, Nintendo hasn't really come out with something that you can play competitively like that, you know? They get a bunch of people together and they play the same thing. They have special cartridges made and everything. Like, nope. Yeah, uh, yeah. I imagine, um, and, and I apologize. I'm trying to look back. They have not announced the Reggie, games yet. This year, we want to make Nintendo's experience at E3 better than ever. So what is it going to be, Smash Brothers? I don't oh, know. So um, I would, I would almost, I wonder if they'll go old school on it. Mario Sports or something? Um, and have, like, old Nintendo um, games. So, qualifying rounds are 
begin May 30th at Best Buy locations at major cities. I live in a sort of major city. If this is somewhere here at Best Buy, I'm going to go and I'm going to qualify. I, I don't feel like I'm the best gamer in the world. I die and I make stupid mistakes. But I would like to just see the games and have the experience and see what it's like. What about you? Yeah, it's Best Buys all over the damn place up here where I'm at. (laughs) Um, You going to go try it out? Probably not. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I might take a look just out of curiosity for curiosity's sake, but nah. I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm not in the in the Nintendo games that strong like I used to be, especially not the games they're probably playing. Yeah, I mean, I can get the hell kicked out of myself. No, I mean you're spot on. Like if I go, if I show up there and it's um. Smash Bros. and Mario Kart Wii U oh, on 200cc? Forget about it. I haven't even touched those uh, games. Oh, yeah, man. Forget it. I, as soon as I start, I'll be I'm last place instantly. Well, except when we go to our friend's houses. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Then I can smack the hell out of you. Um, <laughs> uh, so I think that's good. I think that's going to build goodwill. Um, kind of just wrapping up some of the other Nintendo E3 uh, shenanigans. Um, Nintendo is not doing a press conference. But they are doing their E3 Nintendo Direct, which, quite frankly, is basically a press conference that they pre-film without a giant crowd. Mm. Uh, that's going to go head-to-head with Square Enix. Square Enix's live stream press conference. Nintendo was there first, so Square Enix is the one making the play and like trying to push around. Or maybe they didn't have much of a choice, because you know, I mean, there's a lot of companies with events going on uh, this year. Well, yeah, but Square's got some great <laughs> stuff to show off, probably. You, you think like, so? Oh yeah, they probably got some stuff coming. What do you um? What do you think is coming for Square Enix? Kingdom Hearts <clears throat> three. Okay. <laughs> A little bit more Final Fantasy footage. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. But I mean, Square typically teams up. Like Final Fantasy fifteen, I imagine is going to be a headliner at PlayStation. Tomb Raider is going to be a headliner at Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just, I don't know, like, I, I, I mean, like, maybe, kind of like Ubisoft, like, I don't feel like I watch the Ubisoft press conference and see anything new. I feel like it's just mm-hmm. a rehash of what I see at the others. Mm-hmm. So, maybe we'll, maybe that's just what Square's doing, and we're just gonna kind of get that. Yeah, we'll see, I guess. Um, uh, and then, uh, on, uh, two days during the week of E3, Best Buy locations will have Mario Maker on the Wii U available for people to play. I assume that these will be the same Best Buys that have um, the World Championship, so if you make it... It would make sense. It would be stupid not to. You're going to draw people in one way and get them to pick up uh, Mario Maker. Why not? So, um, so that'll be interesting. Uh, I don't have a Wii console, as I've said many times, so I don't know. Maybe I'll check that out um, just to see what it's like. Um, last bit of news, uh, and not like crazy news, but Windows 10 is going to come pre-installed with Candy Crush. I've never played that game. I've never played it either, but the only reason I thought this was weird is because people are legit, some people are legitimately addicted and have spent hundreds, if not thousands of dollars playing this game. And to, like, have it pre-installed on a Windows machine and have it sit there next to, um, I don't know, to Solitaire and Minecraft, not, uh, maybe Minecraft one day, but, uh, Minesweeper, um, you know, like, I just think some people are gonna get suckered into making purchases that they didn't realize or think are their plan, which I'm sure is their plan. Yep. That thing's 100 megabits, though. I mean, 100 megabits today is nothing. Yeah, I know, but still, man. Some people like their porn and their pictures of their cats and stuff like that, you know? (laughs) (laughs) So, I don't know. That'll be interesting to see how that pans out. Um, One thing I forgot to call back. So, circling back to the beginning. Bloodstained. uh, The uh, Castlevania um, creator's next game. Some fans, I saw a lot of fans legitimately upset that Bloodstained was not going to be on Wii U console. And? I agree with you. Um, <laughs> there I are... blame them for being angry, though. Yeah. 
uh, their argument was that Nintendo consoles are what drove Castlevania games and made Castlevania games great, and that they were doing a disservice to that fan base by not including the next installment on um, a Nintendo console. Wow. I'm going to be honest. They're right. They're right. Ah. Nintendo did drive the hell out of some Castlevania games. But, but, if Nintendo were willing to do more to make themselves an option for the game, I'm pretty sure they would make a Wii U version. Or at least a virtual console version to be played on the 3DS or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see this as a stretch goal. To be honest, we um, Nintendo has been pretty uh, has, has has been pretty deficient with Castlevania games since uh, the CD era. They haven't really tried to make any. Uh, I mean, there were some on the handhelds. Um, I, I know Game Boy Advance had some coming out. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's just yeah. there's no console versions. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you flip flops on me there, which is fair and fine. I'm glad that we have different opinions. Uh, I don't know. My whole thing was like I understand like like having loyalty to your fans. Mm-hmm. But I just and I could be wrong, but I just feel like most fans of Castlevania games probably have a PS4 and Xbox One. And you, yeah, that's what most of the, my most meaningful experiences aside from you know the ones on the on the on the, you know the Nintendo systems have been on the PlayStation and PlayStation Two. And some of those games haven't been that great. I ain't gonna lie. Some of the 3D games, <laughs> Castlevania's haven't been that good. They're no, not... yeah. But, uh, this might... I mean, go back to your roots. Go, to, uh, go back to 2D. Symphony of the Night was great. I mean, that was the most awesome Castlevania game in existence, as far as I'm concerned. But it, it didn't go on a whole lot of consoles. I had it for, I got it for the Saturn and for the, um, PlayStation. Yeah, it was, um... It was a PS Plus game, so I played it. Um, I don't mean to keep pimping PS Plus. It's just I I just happen to play a lot of games, so that service is a good service. Um, but I played through that. Uh, so it's available on uh, PS One Classic. So I mean, if you haven't played it and want to know kind of why everybody's freaking out about Bloodstain, definitely go pick it up. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, speaking of playing, uh, what have you been playing these past uh, week or so? Actually, I've been continuing on with the. Uh... Final Fantasy Tactics. That game's fun, man. <laughs> it's fun. I gotta go now. I gotta go up and uh, and, and unlock Cloud. Oh man, I would never have unlocked Cloud if I didn't look at a guide. Like that is. <laughs> it is hard. It ain't easy. <laughs> go here. Talk to this guy. Go here. It ain't see easy. this scene. Go uh, go here. Mm-hmm. Talk to. Oh my gosh. Like yeah, that is too much. Don't give me the line. That's the first time I got him up the old, old so many years ago was by using the guy. Yeah. Um, that's good. I mean, so you cloud, so that's fourth chapter, so you're you're rounding the end. Mm-hmm. Um I've been I played Shovel Knight. I got the platinum on that. I screamed a couple times just like I did when I was five years old playing games, so it captures that retro feeling perfectly. Um it's I don't know. It's funny. Like I don't, I don't feel like I get mad in real life, but for some reason, like when I die, like and it's completely my own fault. But when I die like two, three times in a row on a game like that, like I just like, I'm just like, ah, what's going uh, on? Uh, what platform are you playing it on? Uh, PS4. Oh, okay. I was wondering because if you, uh, I was wondering if you were playing the Xbox version so you can find the um, the Battle Toads. Uh no, I I uh no I did I found Kratos <laughs> on the PS4 okay. version. All right. Uh, <laughs> It was cute. Um, it was fun. It was fun to watch. I saw the Battle Toads. I saw a video of the Battle Toads. Yeah, um, it's yeah, it's classic Battle Toads gameplay, boy. When you go in that little hidden, going into little challenges for them. Yeah, I mean they did a great job on that. That looks um, I mean like the Kratos was good, and I liked the Kratos. Um, but they did a they did a better job on the Battle Toads, quite frankly. It was more yeah. um, all encompassing and you know different gameplay and. You played Battletoads when you when you got that game. You're absolutely right on that. You get the sweet armor out of it that makes your shovel big like a giant foot or a fist like on the Battletoads game. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, so Shovel Knight, great game. Uh, and then besides that, I haven't played it yet, but I picked up... Uh, I got Final Fantasy... I was gifted Final Fantasy Type-0. Oh, okay. Uh, 
So I've heard kind of um, good things yeah, about it. Kind of, mixed things. Yeah. Mixed, yeah. Um, so I'll pick that up. So, uh, you know, I'll try and get a, a feel for it by next week. Which, you know, I mean, if I put 10 hours in it, I'll only be like 10% done with the game. <clears throat> so. Um, that's all I had on the docket. Did you have anything you wanted to bring up? Any quandaries uh, or queries? Yeah. Nope. Nothing this time. All right. Nothing that stands out to me that I wanted to bring up anyway. Sounds good. Um, definitely appreciate your time. If you're out there listening still, uh, thank you. And you can hear more from me at uh, NerdEXP on Twitter. Um, I'm also NerdEXP on IGN. And uh, whatever blogs I have on that site are also mirrored on my site. Um, I don't mean to keep saying it like an infomercial, but NerdEXP.com. Um, I also do another uh, podcast that focuses on movies and television. Uh, this past week we talked Age of Ultron. Uh, full spoilers for people who saw it. Uh, you can check that out, the uh, Nerd EXP Cinecast. If you want to hear more from Brooks... You can hit me up at Military Veteran Gamer on my IGN, or you can follow me on Twitter at NavyNVG. All right. Uh, well, thank you guys for listening to this week's episode, and thank you, Brooks. You're quite welcome. I hope that we were able to help you guys with your gaming IQ. Level up, friends. Peace.